of our own practices, um, but also try and make this a little bit of a, a trustworthy um, space of exchange. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have also a lot of expertise on the topic, so maybe we can try and make this a little bit more of a dialogue rather than just a monologue on my part. Um, what we would like to share with you is some of the benefits that we've experienced in collaborating across CE and beyond, across affiliates, across regions in the Wikimedia movement. And of course, we also want to be very, very transparent, very honest with you that collaborating across affiliates is not always easy. So we do want to share some of the challenges we've been experiencing as well. And to make this a little bit more tangible for you, um, stay tuned because in the end we also have a little share, shareable PDF uh, document that we put together with some of the learnings that you can take along with you into any collaborations you might go into in the future. Now, um, just to give you a little bit of context, who are we that we are collaborating? I already mentioned ourselves. Um, on the top left you see myself and my colleague Cicela from Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, on the top right, you see Ivana from Wikimedia Serbia, also a chapter. I already mentioned us collaborating, but we also are collaborating with all the other chapters and uh, user groups on this screen right now. So on the bottom left, you see Angie and Carolina. They are from Wikimedia Argentina. This is also a chapter. And we are also collaborating with three user groups from the East African community, which is around the right side, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, represented by Carol, Winnie, Douglas, and Anthony. So we're actually quite a large partnership, I find. Um, we're six affiliates across four different regions and three time zones. Um, we've been working together since the start of the year. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background or context around what we're actually working on, although this talk will be a little bit more on the side of how we are collaborating, how this has been going for us. But I think this is kind of sensible for you to have like a bit of context. Um, so the six affiliates that I just mentioned, we have been getting together in this cross-affiliate collaboration. And we're unofficially calling this the Inno Lab, um, short for Innovation Lab. Um, because we are working on a project where we are trying to build a new innovation infrastructure for our Wikimedia movement. Um, this means that we're trying to build a new program that will help us tap into a lot of the innovation potentials that we have in our movement, but that are not being tapped in yet. So we know our movement is doing a lot of amazing things, and we also know, and especially our research has also shown, that... There you go. Welcome. Our research has also shown that there's still a lot of challenges that people in our movement are facing that are making it difficult for us to be innovative, to really be experimental in the things that we want to try in our movement, be bold and try new things, and also um, minimize the limitations that are keeping us from being innovative. Welcome. Um, so the format that we are trying to build this new program is trying to tackle this very issue. All right, one other, one last point on this, uh, because this might come up as a question. Us, as a collaboration, we do not yet know what this program is going to look, at that we're, look like that we're trying to build right now. We're basically in a process of research, ideation, prototyping to find out what are the formats that our movement actually needs in, in order to really foster innovation. So we're still in a process and we're not really in the uh, part of the process yet where we have all of the answers. Um, and today I want to focus a little bit more on the part of how have we been working together across, for those who, who missed it, across six different affiliates um, in our movement spanning four regions and three time zones. Alrighty. Now, before we dive into that, I'd like to get a little bit of feel for the people in the room. Just give me a short uh, show of hands if you have ever um, collaborated yourself with any other affiliate in the movement. Okay, I think I'd say about half, maybe. It's somewhere to sure, that's all right. Um, which of you have also collaborated with affiliates that are, are in a different region from your own? 
Yeah, quite a few less already. That's great because that means that we can have a bit of a conversation um, going forward. Alrighty, so this is actually the, the core reason why we decided to go into such a big collaboration across different affiliates. Um, we knew, so Wikimedia Deutschland were the, the partner that initiated this project in the first place. And we knew that we want to build something that works outside of our own communities, outside of our own region and the, the German speaking region specifically. But we also knew that there is no way we can do this build something for other regions without having a very deep understanding of those regions. And this is why we need, knew we needed a very strong partnership to help us build something that is truly needs-based, that is context-specific, and also human-centered. So really built for the users in our different um, movement regions. Um, I don't know, those of you who, who put up their hand just then, does anybody want to re uh, share a reason they've experienced that made them think, yes, this is why we need to collaborate across um, our own region and with other affiliates, if you feel like it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're just getting a new perspective. A new perspective? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. And this definitely um, is something that, that resonates with us, surely. And um, I want to um, move a little bit into this first part, which is more of the benefits that we have experienced um, from collaborating across or in such a big partnership, really. And for this, um, I'm very happy because I told you before, Ivana unfortunately couldn't make it here in person, but she was so kind to actually send in a video recording so that she's kind of still, still in the space with us. Um, so I'm going to basically um, hand over to Ivana in this very moment. Let's see if, I'm very excited to see if this works. Oh no. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ivana Vlasic from the Media Serbia and I'm part of the philosophy collaboration called Inner Lab, which I already introduced you to. Um, I'm going to talk about the benefits of this collaboration and specifically about uh, the ways how it can be uh, applicable and beneficial for the CU region. One of the most obvious benefits is definitely the diversity of our team and having people from different countries and continents working together towards the same goal. Um, this is how we are trying to cover various perspectives and needs uh, in movement, especially needs in terms of innovation. Cross chapter collaboration is something that is essential for our sustainability, and it is a place and safe uh, place where we can share our resources, and not just in terms of funds, but also in terms of knowledge exchange, skill exchange, um, the communication skills, etc. This is something that is strengthening our uh, ties and also nurturing innovation. I hope you have some time in the panel to talk about uh, the examples from your affiliates um, and also to share how it was beneficial for your chapter or community. Why is this important for the CEO region? Um, because of the flexibility uh, of, of, in terms of whatever partner brings to the table. So we strive for equity uh, and we know that not every uh, affiliate and communities um, are developed in the CEO region, but we can be flexible, flexible about it and actually value what every partner can provide for the project. CEO and community affiliates um, have um, a lot of similarities, we know about that, but um, we can use those similarities to create better impact. And this means that we have similar culture and we have similar history, but we also have um, uh, similar or the same ways how our institutions are working, how we are communicating with our partners. In these kind of collaborations, we can work together to improve uh, all of the things that we are passing uh, um, different stage of development or of um, uh, being is important because we can actually help uh, communities that are still in the development stage. 
um, these kind of projects can encourage them, can be an incentive for them to um, gather the community members, to start new initiatives, to uh, apply with uh, grant proposals, um, to actually be more active in the movement. And what we have as a huge resource is the CE Hub. Uh, so collaboration can be supported by the CE Hub. Uh, so basically, um, especially in terms of writing grant proposals, but also in terms of networking with uh, partners who are dealing with similar problems or are trying to uh, um, create similar solutions. So what we have done so far uh, the inner lab of collaboration, uh, we had a workshop where we developed uh, some of the ideas not developed, but uh, basically the brainstorm and uh, the ideas that we might develop in the future are in this slide. We don't have enough time to go into details, but you can scan the QR code that is in this slide and provide um, feedback for these kind of ideas. So basically, uh, we can start um, the web platform where we are trying to connect um, uh, people with resources and people who don't have those resources but maybe have ideas and maybe have problems that they're trying to solve. Um, those people can be on the movement but also outside of it. And uh, uh, this is one of the ideas, but also we can create um, in person or virtual events uh, such as the Steven Nova, where we are gathering people, um, developers with community members, um, and trying to foster collaboration and knowledge exchange between participants. Um, I'm happy to, to see, uh, listen, or read your. Um, feedback and your comments on these ideas, uh, please be, uh, feel free to scan the QR code and share this with us. Alrighty. Okay, so this is, uh, yes, the last slide that Ivana ended on. Um, feel free to scan the QR code if you want to. I'm going to pull it back up later on so you don't have to scan right now. There's also time in the end. Um, Basically, these are the, uh, some of the ideas that have come out of this collaboration that we are looking at um, developing in the future. Um, now, obviously, a collaboration of this setup uh, doesn't only have benefits. Uh, let's be honest, we'll always come into some challenges, difficulties that we're facing. Um, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have experienced this before, especially those who already put their hands up about, um, who have collaborated in the past. Yeah, I see some smiling faces. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I have a quick question for you. What would you say, either from experience or maybe an assumption on your part, what would you say is uh, the biggest challenge in cross-affiliate collaboration? Do you think it is A, communication, B, resource allocation, C, cultural differences, or D, any other reason you can come up with. So maybe let's just do another quick show of hands. The question is, what do you consider the biggest challenge in cross-affiliate collaboration? Raise your hand if you think it's A, communication. Oh, there, a hand went up really fast there. Okay, what about B, resource allocation? Yeah, or about same now. C, cultural differences. Well, it's like just about the same amount for each one so far. And what about D? Does anyone else see any other reason? All right, do you want to share? What are you thinking? Uh, I have experienced that uh, affiliates don't really know well what other affiliates are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so each one is doing their own job, their own work. And if they, they knew that uh, lots of projects they have are similar, and they've got similar problems, they will probably reach out automatically to them. I'm a member of uh, different chapters, like Wikimedia Germany and Wikimedia Belgium, for instance, mm -hmm. and I noticed that Wikimedia Germany, they don't know anything about what's happening in Wikimedia Belgium. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please. Um. There's a bigger thing before the cultural difference is the context difference. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, different cultures, 
into the micro but also the context of like how a different part of the world functions. It's more like in, more in context of like those four areas of working. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I feel like it's more like a context of like you know if we decide to do something like global, you know, is that global model the same way it can be replicated in another part of the world? Right. What context of the part needs to be like localized? That's I think like more of the context. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is also something we're um, experiencing a lot, um, not just on the collaboration aspect, but also when we're thinking of, you know, what do we want to create in this collaboration? Anything, we are very aware of anything we build is not going to work the same in each of the regions that we're working with. We will always need to look at how does this need to be localized or contextualized in the different regions. Absolutely. Anyone else have anything to add? There, there are the other... No, I think for me personally, in this specific collaboration, it's also kind of a mix of C and D, I think, because I realized very early on that when working with people from different cultures, this also means that they have very different ways of working. And um, us being kind of in the, the initiators of this um, project, it's my tendency to come in working full time for Wikimedia Deutschland to come in and say, okay, this is how I want to do it. This is my structure. This is, you know, my expectations. And this is what I want my output to be. And then realizing in the next meeting, okay, this is not going to work for somebody in Kenya or in Argentina. And having to kind of really let go of the way that I want things to go, the way that I'm used to it. And, you know, being okay with being uncomfortable in a different, um, outside of my comfort zone, really. And maybe like a very, very small anecdote, which is, it seems so insignificant, but I think it's very symbolic. When we did, as a partnership, a presentation at Wikimania and we were preparing, I said to the partners, well, you know what, I, I can take the time. You know, just stop the time to make sure that we're on track. And our partners from Argentina just laughed at me and said, that's so German of you. And I was like, what do you mean? That everybody wants to be on time. Isn't that how it works? This is how conferences work. This is how Wikimania works. But um, I had to realize, no, actually, I think the concept of time even is different depending on where you're from and definitely in Latin America. Uh, um, to, to clarify yeah. this for CEE, CE, time is always last minute. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I would say in our collaboration, not so much. But um, yeah, I can see how that might be. Um, definitely one of the bigger, or not bigger, but one of the things to have to deal with. All right, so um, I'm going to hand back to my wonderful colleague Ivana um, to share some of our um, lessons learned, um, specifically in this collaboration. Let me see if this. Oh, it's so wonderful. The most important remarks about um, every collaboration and the project are lessons learned. These lessons are not just being used for self-evaluation um, and to see what we have done so far and how well we did it, but also they serve as resources for entire movement and especially for affiliates um, that, that want to start similar collaboration and uh, avoid common mistakes. The first thing that uh, we had as challenge are limited resources to enable efficient engagement. This means, as uh, we already mentioned, that we have this team that um, some representatives are uh, from chapters, some from user groups, so we don't have um, the similar amount of resources that we can provide for the project. And we tried to apply the grant proposal for the movement strategy implementation grants, but the process took longer than expected. Um, this affected proper pickup of collaboration and the timeline of our planned activities. And I think it affected the motivation of our partners, but uh, we're trying to overcome that. Uh, we also uh, learned that we need to respect and use the values of uh, every partners, uh, every partner. So basically, we don't need, uh, we don't need to have funds for every, from every partner or um, some other resources, but we can use their skills or their know-how in terms of research projects or connections with communities or partners outside of the movement. Those connections can be crucial for the collaboration and can be used to achieve. Um, greater results. 
And this kind of collaboration definitely helps um, help us grow together and not just individually as chapters or um, user groups. Uh, because we were uh, from different countries and different continents, we were in different time zones, and this can be challenges, uh, challenging uh, in terms of communication. Um, we overcame this by having regular meetups and being flexible if someone is not being able to join, but of course informing the old partners about the steps that we are taking and about the activities that we are having. Um, the one thing that uh, emerged as a um, cornerstone within our collaboration was trust. Um, trust is quite important uh, and uh, this is making sure that we are having a dedication of our entire team. Uh, and um, also uh, what's interesting is that uh, of course that English is not um, our native language uh, but the communication dynamics can involve images and colors and shapes um, that they can provide and create a working uh, space that, uh, where we are uh, feeling safe and comfortable to share our points of view. This is quite important for uh, diverse team uh, and if you're having people from different culture or, or different backgrounds, um, uh, this can help them relax um, and give them maximum of their work. And with this, I'm finishing my slides and giving um, a word to Lucia to share with you our collaboration uh, uh, playbook. And um, I'm also uh, encouraging you to share uh, some of the challenges you had and maybe uh, during this panel you can find a solution for uh, the challenges. Yes, Ivana already mentioned it. Um, we actually put together a little, what we call collaboration playbook as um, one of the kind of minor um, outputs of our collaboration, kind of on the, something we're just working on on the side. Um, basically, this is, it's not a checklist. It's not so much a step-by-step -step guide. I don't, don't think that's really possible to even come up with something of the sort, but it's rather um, a collage of our personal experiences in this collaboration, um, a lot of quotes are in there, a lot of stories of what has been going well, what has not been going well. Um, you can see also some of the titles of some of the um, stories we have in there, for instance, an unexpected setback or our biggest scare coming up. Um, it's always our intention to try and be very, very honest about how we feel in this collaboration, which has been quite rocky every now and then especially on the funding side, as Ivana mentioned. Um, so this is a downloadable PDF. It's on Commons. You're welcome to download and use as an inspiration motivation for your own work. We're also looking to kind of continue to extend this, um, uh, this, this PDF as we continue our collaboration. Um, I will pull it back up, the, the QR code in the end, also in case you miss it now. But for now, we're about... Uh, 25 minutes in. I would be happy to share any of your questions uh, or answer any of your questions, sorry, or if you have anything that you would like to share with the group about any challenges or um, best practices from your own collaborations, this is definitely the space to share. Yes, please. What were you innovating on? Like, what did you guys actually develop? Yeah, that's the... Um, I can kind of go back. Um, I don't know. This is this slide here, what we were talking on. Um, so we haven't finished a product yet. So that's not where we're at, mainly because the funding didn't come in, so our timeline kept being <laughs> pushed back and back and back and back. Unfortunately, so um, originally we did plan to be standing here and presenting a final product, which didn't happen. Um, but so what we have done so far, we've done a ton of research, also with um, a lot about a 70 other stakeholders in the movement trying to better understand what are your challenges in your regions, what are your needs in order to be more innovative. And then continued with a lot of ideation workshops where we kind of um, brainstorming ideas of how can we actually tackle these issues, right? And this here, and this is where this QR code is heading, um, are basically some of the ideas that we um, selected through a, a, a wider selection process that we are kind of currently looking into further developing 
to then prototype and see which ones actually do make sense in our movement and which ones do not. And they range from um, physical events that are around innovation, but also around being more explorative and also embracing failure, which is a big part of innovation, of um, just trying things and not caring that out of 10 ideas, eight are not going to work. Um, and all the way to um, challenger platforms, uh, I want to call it, where people from the movement can really um, post their ideas, whereas others can work on actually implementing innovative solutions for those. Um, all of these ideas are basically coming from very specific issues that people in the movement mention. So people saying, hey, I know that I have a great idea, but I'm not going to the person who implements it. I don't have the skills. I don't even want to do it. Um, so maybe we need to have a kind of matching platform where we get people from one region who knows what the problem is together with somebody who knows what the solution might be to an another person who actually might be the implementer. So it's a very wide range of ideas. And they're also, um, some of them are not even fully pl fleshed out yet because that's precisely where we're at right now in the process of kind of continuing on um, brainstorming of what would that look like, um, which also means that it's a great point in time to actually give feedback because <laughs> nothing is set in stone and there's a lot of room to implement any further ideas outside of our collaboration and outside of the other stakeholders that we're getting in. Yes. Mm -hmm. and my second question is, like, is it good for Great questions. Um, so to your question, it's actually both. Um, and this is also due to the fact that um, in order to, or this is what our research has found, is that in order to um, really um, be more innovative, we will need to tap a little bit into our um, or, or create a little bit of a mindset shift also. I think it's, it's not easy to just say, let's be innovative, and voila, we are. Um, it's also kind of a, a, about creating an understanding for what does it mean to be innovative? What would that look like? How can we, um, that are also doing innovative things, let's not forget about that, actually tap into that more? What would that look like? So I think it is a lot about mindset and, and capacity building, um, understanding innovation processes. But the intention is also that definitely this program should help really implement specific technological tools or projects. So it's both, both sides to that. And um, maybe this will be one format. Maybe this means it needs to be two different three things. Maybe it will have to be five different things. Who knows? But that's, I think, pretty far down the line. <laughs> Um, your second question was about getting involved. Um, yes, so we're not actively looking for more partners in this collaboration specifically, but we're very, very open for extending um, this, what we're calling kind of our, our stakeholder um, network. We actually engage with these stakeholders a lot. So it's not, you know, like you won't hear from, not hear from us for, I don't know, half a year, but actually we have very, very regular check-ins we invite everyone to um, give feedback very regularly. We have, very, um, we have various formats of how to get involved because it's very important to us to actually make sure that we cover a lot of voices in the movement. Um, so you're very welcome, of course, to also get involved. Okay, I just got a sign that we don't have that many qu uh, minutes left. Yeah? Um, what, is the, what was the coolest project in your opinion? Of um, these? Yeah, what, what, what oh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I have my favorites for sure. Um, I think oh, my my favorite would be um, having. Okay, I'm going to use some technical terms. I don't know if everybody knows this, but um, coming from design thinking, my um, favorite would be having these very, very short but regular what are called design sprints. Um, basically, f five fa days of fast-paced um, product development um, processes that, in my opinion, should be fully paid and free for everyone and regular in all regions of the world, of course, so that we can kind of get to a mindset of where we don't have to apply for a grant and wait for months and already have to, like, report. And, you know, like, it's very hard to 
start getting involved in some projects, especially when they're new ones, but rather be, there's a space, I get a coach, and I can really quickly test if this is a good idea, yes or no. And in the end, there are no hard feelings if it doesn't work. But if it does work, you know you're going to get great funding from the foundation. I think this would be my favorite. Um, but to be honest, the ideation workshops are also very fun. Somebody said we need an, an innovation rap song for the movements, and I thought, okay, I mean, if that's going to get our motivation up, <laughs> I'm open for just about anything. Alrighty. I'm going to see another sign, so I'm going to start wrapping up. Um, I'm going to head back to the end of the slide, um, because we were already saying, if you want to get involved, please uh, contact us, of course. Um, best thing to do is email us at our project email address, which is unlock at wikimedia.de. It's on the slide here. Um, someone from the project team will get back to you for sure. Um, actually, sad news on my part, I myself am leaving Wikimedia Deutschland this year, so it's probably not going to be me who answers your email address, uh, your email. Aw, yes. <laughs> but I have wonderful team members, of course, and specifically Ivana is also, of course, um, from the CE region, maybe your, your closest contact also. And um, we'd love it if you download our playbook, use it, um, think it's great, think it's not great, whatever. It's always good if there's anything you can pull from it, any learning, then we're happy. And if you want to give us feedback and get involved in the ideas that we're developing, this is the QR code on the right, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.